What's up, YouTube? Have you ever wondered if you could create retro text in Affinity Designer or Affinity Publisher? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen. I'm a media design educator here on YouTube and today we're talking all about creating retro text in Affinity Designer or Affinity Publisher. You can do this in either Affinity Designer or Affinity Publisher on the desktop or the iPad. Now let me just make sure that I cite my sources here. I learned to create this type of retro text from Spoon Graphics here on YouTube. Spoon Graphics is a fantastic graphic design channel where you can learn so much. But Spoon Graphics really focuses on Illustrator and Photoshop. And of course, this channel, we try and focus on the alternatives to those. And what's really interesting about this retro text tutorial that Spoon Graphics did, and it's been probably a year or two since he did it, is that it uses a lot of the tools that people gripe about missing in Affinity Designer. They say, well, I wish Affinity Designer had the same like blend tool as Illustrator does, right? And so it doesn't have that. So I wanted to challenge myself to see if I could do it in Affinity Designer, even if I didn't have those tools that were being used by Spoon Graphics in Adobe Illustrator. So this is going to be a really interesting challenge today. I've done this a couple times so I know that it can be done and I'm going to show you how to do it as well. There's some little workarounds that we have to do because we don't have some of those tools but it's totally possible to do most of this. You're going to see me do substitutions for things like the blend tool and the offset path command which are going to be really helpful. We're also going to have to use some features from Affinity Photo either via Studio Link or going into Affinity Photo on the iPad in order to do things like the mesh warp because one of the things that's missing from Affinity Designer is the envelope warp and that is a challenge. I'm totally willing to agree that it is but let's see how close we can get and what we can do here and of course I will link the tutorial from Spoon Graphics down in the description below if you want to see the original and how to do this inside of Adobe Illustrator. So let's go ahead, let's dive in and get started. Okay, so now we are here in Affinity Designer and we're just going to make a new document. And I'm just going to go over here and choose print because I want to use a standard letter size. So let's go ahead and do that. Then go ahead and make sure that you click create artboard. So you get an artboard and then click create. Having an artboard just makes it a little easier down the road. So here we go, we've got our artboard and we're here. So we need to add some text. So under the text tool, make sure that you're using the artistic text tool. You want to use that so that you can easily resize it. Okay, now we just need to go ahead and type something in here. It really doesn't matter what we type in here, but I'm going to use retro text here. And you can see that it's getting a little bit too big here. So we're going to need to go ahead and size that down. Because we use the artistic text tool, it's really easy to do that. Now I'm just going to go ahead and center this up on the page. And then we're going to go ahead and take care of the font. For this retro text effects that we're trying to do the same way that Spoon Graphics did it, we are going to really need kind of a bigger, bolder font. So I'm just going to scroll through here and look for something um, that's going to be a little bit bigger so that we have some space inside the text to actually work on it. And I think I'm going to go ahead and go with Firebox. Now, not everybody's going to have Firebox, but go with something similar, you know, something that's big and bold and has some space inside of it. And here again, the artistic text tool makes it super easy for us to go ahead and make it bigger or smaller. Next, let's just go ahead and duplicate this just by holding down Option and dragging, and then we'll make a duplicate copy of that. Then that's because we're going to make this text uneditable, so we need to keep an editable copy back here. Then we're going to go ahead and go up to our layer menu, which I know you can't see on the screen recording, but it's just the layer menu. And then you're just going to go down to where you find convert to curves, and that's going to make this text uneditable and make them all curves. It's going to put them in a group over here in the layers panel. And for what we're going to do, we don't want them in a group, so ungroup them, and then we're going to merge them all together by using the Boolean operation up in the top right. That's going to be the add command up there. And that's going to make them all one object. Next, we're going to need a couple of different copies of this text, so go ahead and hit Command-C and Command-V twice to make two copies of these curves, and then we'll be able to do some different things to create the outline effect with this. So go ahead and we're going to change the color of the middle one to white. So just go to swatches and choose white. And now we've got the middle one that's white and we've got black on front and back. Next we need to work around for the offset stroke. So we're going to use the contour tool and we're going to use this on both of the black ones. So first we're going to take the front black one and we're going to make it smaller to create the effect of an offset stroke path here. So that's just the contour tool which is a pretty new tool. Then we're going to take the back set of black objects and we're going to go ahead and use the contour tool to make them bigger as though we were offsetting a stroke out to the outside. And this is just going to create kind of this stacked effect and give us the middle area to work in where we're going to put in our line work. 
Before we do any of that though, we're going to go ahead and make a copy of this. We're just going to use the selection tool to select everything and then option drag to create a new copy of it. We just want to create copies of our iterations as we go along so that we can always get back to a former one if we need to. So now that we've got a copy of it, we're going to go ahead and select the other one and just hit command G to group them all together. That just keeps things nice and organized. Now let's go ahead and make a copy of our top black text by selecting it, command C, command V to paste it in there. Then we're going to use this to go ahead and create our line work. So let's go ahead and select off of our text objects. And then we're going to go ahead and just grab our pen tool to create a straight horizontal line. To make sure it's straight, you're going to hold down shift while you're drawing. Next, we're going to need to go ahead and make the stroke larger on it. So go up to the stroke panel and just drag that up till you feel like it's big enough for what you want. We're going to go um, just about two points here. And here's where we're going to need to kind of hack our way around not having the blend tool. So we're going to go ahead and use what's called power duplicate. So we're going to duplicate this line by holding option and dragging it. And then we're going to duplicate by hitting command J. And every time you do that, it's going to do the same transformation you did before, just on a duplicate. So just hit command J a whole bunch of times until you fill the entire text with lines. Then let's go ahead and select all of these lines by going over into our layers panel, clicking on the top one, scrolling down to the very bottom line, holding down shift and clicking on it. Then we're going to go ahead and make a copy just in case we need these lines again, we'll still have them. So then we'll just go ahead and do an option and drag off of here and we'll just take it off the artboard so that we have those for later. Now let's do that again to select all of the lines that are on our artboard and then we need to go ahead and expand these. So back up to the layer menu again and choose expand stroke. That's going to turn them all into objects. Then we can go ahead and do the add command again, and that will make just one curve object of all of these lines. Next, we're going to need to merge these lines with our letters. So let's go ahead and select our letters and our lines. And then from the Boolean operations, choose intersect. And that leaves us with a whole bunch of lines, which we can easily see by turning off the letters there. And so you can see we've got these horizontal lines running across. And the next thing that we need to do is create an inner shadow. So let's go ahead and we will take our letters and we are going to copy them again, command C, command V. And then we'll just go ahead and nudge our copy by holding down shift and using our arrow keys to, to go to the right and down. Then we're going to select both of our letter curves and use the subtract command. That creates a nice little shadow for us. Now we are well on our way to where we want to go, but let's just take a moment to just clean up a little bit. Let's go ahead and select all of our lines here so that we can group them together and not have kind of a messy side of our artboard. Command G to group them. Then let's go ahead and get our most current letters and we're just going to hold down option drag to copy them again so that we can have a new copy to work on. And then the ones that we were just using we'll select and hit command G to group those together. Just keep everything nice and neat. Next thing that we want to do is go ahead and add our drop shadow. So in order to do that, we're just going to need to shrink our text down a little bit. So let's go ahead and we're going to select all of the text that we are currently working on in this area down at the bottom. So we'll just drag over all of them to select them and then we're just going to hold down shift and resize it just so that we have some room to create our drop shadow here. And the drop shadow is going to be another one where we just kind of have to hack our way around the not having the blend tool a little bit. So let's go ahead and now that we've got it resized we're going to grab our back most letters and make a copy of that command C command V and then we're going to do the same little duplicate trick that we did on the lines except in this case we want to go down and to the right. So we're just going to do a little drag here and make sure it's not too far so that this doesn't get out of hand. And then we're just going to hit command J over and over and over again until we have the kind of drop shadow that we want. And then just like with the lines, we're going to go ahead and select them all by holding down shift and clicking on the top and the bottom one. And that's going to allow us to go ahead and merge them together. And we can do that merge just by going ahead and hitting the add button, just like we did before. And then we've completed the drop shadow, but there is some cleanup work that we need to do. Because we don't have a blend tool, things can't be exactly smooth. So we're going to select all of these points using the direct selection tool and delete them. And that's going to allow us to get rid of kind of these little bumps along here where our blend isn't really perfect. So this takes a little bit of cleanup time depending on how many letters you have, but just go ahead and select wherever there's little bumps and go ahead and delete them. Now, the closer that your copies were together, the more smooth these will look, but also the more bumps that you will have. So if you can get your copies close enough together, you might not have to do this, but if they're further apart, then you'll just have less bumps to deal with. So it's just kind of personal preference at that point. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete all of these really quick. OK, 
Okay, so now that we've got that taken care of on the drop shadow, we can go ahead and we can make the line drop shadow for this. But of course, before we do that, let's just go ahead and make another copy of this. That's just going to make it easier, keep everything together if we need to get back to anything. So you'll notice that when I design, I always make a lot of copies. Let's go ahead and group our last one together again, just to keep things neat. And we're going to do this exactly the way we did the other lines. We're going to need to make a copy of our drop shadow because this is going to be our line drop shadow. So Command C, Command V on that to make a new copy. And then we're going to need to go ahead and make lines just like we did before. Only in this case, because it's a drop shadow, they're going to be diagonal lines. So just grab the pen tool and just go ahead and make a nice big diagonal line. And once we have that line, it's going to keep the same stroke as before. So now all we need to do is do the duplicate just by holding down option and dragging. And remember, we want these to be pretty close together. And then we can just hit command J to power duplicate that all the way through. Now it's going to take a lot of lines and you need to make sure that your line that you drew was big enough to cover all of your text. If your line was too small, then you won't get across all of your text and you'll need to start over. Then we'll go ahead and of course, we're going to select the entire group just like we did before. And then we'll go ahead and duplicate it just like we always do. We're just going to duplicate that off to the side so that we don't have to worry about it. Group those together to keep things neat. And then let's go ahead and select the lines that are actually over our text again. So you just got to scroll all the way to the bottom, hold down shift and select that last line. And then you've got that together. And then of course, what we have to do is we need to expand this and then merge it together. So just like before, go up to layer menu, choose expand stroke, and then go up to your Boolean operations and choose add. That'll make it all one curve. It does take a second because there's a lot going on there. Then of course you can go ahead and select your drop shadow object and then go up and choose intersect. Now we have all of our diagonal lines together and we just need to go ahead and we're going to need to move those to the back and then move them out behind our other drop shadow so that everything can easily be seen here. And we have this nice dark drop shadow going into the line drop shadow for that real kind of retro text feel there. And that's kind of the completed object here. The next thing that we're going to need to do is going to involve actually going into Affinity Photo so that we can go ahead and add the warp to it. But before we do that, of course, we're going to go ahead and make a copy of this. So let's just go ahead and select everything like we normally do. Then we'll pull this up and an option drag so that we make sure we still have a copy of this even after we go into Affinity Photo and we are going to have to rasterize this to make it work. So let's go up to our file menu and choose edit in photo so that we can open up this document in Affinity Photo and be able to edit here. This is one of the great things about working in Affinity, of course, because everything is so easy to move between. So let's go ahead and select our grouped text and then we're going to go ahead and choose mesh warp. That's going to rasterize it. You can see the assistant is telling you that right there. And then you're going to go ahead and get these mesh warp points. Now this is not, of course, the same as an envelope warp in Illustrator, but we can use it to create a similar effect. So you can move these points around and you can select the Bezier handles to create different effects on your text. So depending on what you want to do, you can kind of move them around and create a nice kind of retro warp look. So I'm just playing around here kind of figuring out do I want an arc to it or a little wave to it. You can select multiple points at the same time to move them together. So you can create quite the thing. Just be aware these are raster. So you need to make this as big as you want it to be when you go ahead and go into Affinity Photo so that you don't run into trouble resizing it later and having something get really pixelated on you. All right, thank you so much for joining me on this journey of creating retro text in Affinity. I hope that you've learned something today. If you found this useful, go ahead and hit the like button. And if you like videos like this, go ahead and hit subscribe as well so that you can follow along for more videos like this one. If you have suggestions for future videos, go ahead and drop those in the comments below as well as if you have any questions or other comments. I always like to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.